Hey, welcome back to my Crafty Hen House. My name is Elaine, and today I have you out in my little seed starting shed. I call it the Hen House. And I had to replant some seedlings that was for my Lasaya peppers, the Nata Pina peppers, and I went ahead and I did some Calendula flowers as well. And I uh, decided to start on some Swiss chard, and it's doing really, really well. So these uh, little things all have to be up potted today. And I'm also gonna take you into the garden and uh, show you my sweet potatoes. Uh, they're doing really well. I'm going to actually pull a couple of the sweet potatoes out to get the uh, starts from them. And we're gonna set them in water and let them get rooted so that we can then again transplant them into the area that I want them to grow, grow and produce. Uh, also, I'm going to be pulling a couple of my um, elderberry trees that I started. I had four and I have two on the back porch in water and I also have two that are planted in soil in pots in the garden and they have to be potted out into the yard. So I'm going to take those and get them transplanted into the yard and then uh, bring my uh, two that I have growing in water on the back porch out and put those in the pots. Now, the reason that I did that was um, I was unsure whether the transplanted uh, set that I had on the back porch in water would survive being uh, put in dirt in my garden. So I wanted to make sure that I had two in reserve in case I lost the ones in the garden or critters got in there. And I'm gonna give you an update on my critter problem as well. So let me take you out to the garden. It's a beautiful day here. It's around 11 o'clock in the morning. This afternoon we're supposed to get some pretty good rain. My husband is out here trimming up all of our areca palms. They go all along uh, the side of this property as well as the other. So we're just gonna clear those out a little bit and get those cleaned up. And let me take you into the garden and show you. These are my sweet potato starts. We started these in a tray in March and uh, about a month later, we pulled them out of the tray and actually planted them in here. I had planted five uh, and two of them are sprouting. The other ones would be in the middle and either side. We're gonna go ahead and dig them up and see if maybe I planted them too deep for them to sprout, but these are ready to be snipped off from the sweet potato and set in water. Then I'm gonna bring you over here and these are the two back plants are my elderberries. They're gonna come out and they're gonna be transplanted into the ground and I'll bring the other two in. And then as far as my critter problem, I believe we were successful since I have one of the ones that was snipped off of my tomatoes is growing again. You see this? And we have some growth here as well, which means they have not been back in. So that's really good news that we were able to stop them from coming in. Also, we have growth on the little pepper plants that they had chewed up. So I'm glad that I left those to give me a gauge on whether they were coming back in or not. You can also see I'm getting tomatoes and these are the early bush girl or bush early girl. And then my other tomato plant on this side also has tomatoes. So we're doing really well with that. And these are better bush. So let me get these sweet potatoes dug up and 
I'll take them into the hen house and show you how I'm going to separate them from the potato as well as I'm going to go ahead and get my other elderberries and uh, bring them back to the shed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dig up these sweet potatoes. I have uh, two of them that came up and then we're gonna go ahead and snip off the starts of these so that we can get them in water and uh, then start them um, in their place where they're gonna grow in the garden. So I'm just gonna pull the whole potato up Let me show you. There is the potato and here's all the starts. And so those will all come off and go into water. Let me get the dirt off. I'm gonna go ahead and set those. It looks to be about one, two, three, four, five. So they're doing really, really good. Actually, I can see if I can pull them off. So they have such a nice root system. I'm really happy with that. And one, let's see. This one's really good. And this is about the size that you want to pull them, about six to 10 inches. That gives them a good head start. Beautiful root system on there. Two, looks like we have three, four, five of them on that potato. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this right back in the ground and see if it grows anymore, and we'll see. Now we're gonna go for the second one right here. Again, I'm gonna go down, pull up the whole potato. And we have this beautiful start right here. We're gonna pull that one off. Isn't that beautiful? It's a nice size, great roots. And then we have a few more on here that are a pretty good size and I'm gonna pull them off as well. And we're gonna put all these in cups of water. And I'm gonna leave this one on just to see what it does. And I'll put that right back in and see if that will continue to grow. Now I have three others in here that did not sprout. So let me dig down and see where they're at. There's one and it's pretty rotted. So I don't think that's gonna do anything. The other one was over on this side, I believe. Yep, and there's another one. This one's pretty rotted as well. Nothing coming up. I don't even see any roots on this one. And then I believe there was one in the middle. Yeah, same with that one. And that's pretty yucky as well. So we'll just put those in the compost and leave this one potato in here with uh, nothing on it. And then this little one right here, we'll put that back. Uh, you really want six to 10 inches when you transplant into water and get a nice good uh, root base on them. But from what I understand, you can go ahead and you can put them right in the soil, but I'm gonna put them in some water uh, for at least a week and uh, really let them drink up and then we'll put them back in this nice soil. So let me take them back into where my gardening tools are and uh, we'll get started. I'm gonna take you up to get the elderberries and I brought the pots up here to show you that these two were potted up and they've been out there in the garden for about a month 
And then these two were the ones that were on the back porch and they're quite odd. They come just as a stick like this. And a lot of places you can just put them in the ground and they'll start growing and they'll get pretty bushy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put these in planters like this. And these two are gonna go ahead and they're gonna go over in this area behind the majestic palm and they're gonna get planted uh, over there. And then eventually uh, these two will go over with them. I came in and I put all of my sweet potato starts in water and we're going to put them on the shelf underneath the grow light. And I'll show you, they have a little really, really good root base on them and very, very healthy. So we're going to put those temporarily underneath that grow light and go ahead and get started on transplanting these uh, peppers. Now these are Lasaya peppers and I'm going to transplant them into the next size little pot. Currently I have them uh, in this tray and we're going to go ahead and put them in these small pots and transplant them up. And how I like to do this is I usually start with my little pot about a little over halfway full and I make a little bit of a trench inside and then we're going to pick up the pepper with a spoon and pick him right up from the bottom and you can see what a nice root that he has and we're going to put that inside the pot and then go ahead and use your spoon to grab some additional soil to pack around. And that way you know that your roots aren't exposed and you've taken them right from one planter to the next uh, where they haven't been exposed to the air for a long duration. And then you're just gonna use your thumbs and push them down a little, make sure it's nicely compacted, and there you have your first one. So I have about 15 plants here. Two of them are calendula, and two of them are bell pepper. This one is a bell pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these planted up, and then I have the Swiss chard. Um, I'm gonna figure out how these get separated, uh, how difficult, but they have a nice roots on the bottom as well that have gone down. So they're nicely uh, rooted and we're gonna get those transplanted up as well. So I'll get this done and I've got my sweet potatoes done. The uh, elderberry, the two that I had in these pots right here, I've already transplanted them out. So these little next ones are gonna go into these pots and then they will go into the garden um, for about a month until they're good and established and I can go ahead and plant them out back. So I'll get busy on this and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so we ended up with 12 Lasaya peppers. Transplanting those, we have two bell peppers and we have two calendulas. I have one up on the top as well. And we're gonna go ahead now and get started on transplanting our Swiss chard. Now I've never grown Swiss chard before and I'm assuming it's usually grown right in the garden, um, right from the start, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Put, plant these in these little pots right here and see if I can't uh, get them going. And then we will uh, put them underneath the grow light as well. So let's get started getting these transplanted up. Before I finish up this video, I want to come back out in the garden and show you where my starts were for my sweet potatoes. And these are the two new elderberry plants that I planted. And 
just a quick peek at how everything is doing. Everything is doing really good out here. I'm gonna start uh, my strawberries today in the pots and I'm gonna take you in real quick and show you uh, exactly what I'm gonna plant them in. But first I wanna take you up to where I planted the elderberries. This is going uh, up along the side like our fruit row. This is our tangelo tree. And this is a uh, lime quat tree. It's getting a lot of new leaves on it. This is my Barbados cherry tree. We've had blooms on that. This is called a yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It gets three different color flowers, white, light purple, and dark purple. These are crepe myrtles. This is a tree that is coming back for the season. And this is a bush right here that's also coming back. This is called a tibiochina, and it has beautiful purple flowers. This is called a ginger shell beautiful very unique flowers on that a ginger shell and then as we go up here this is thoralis with the yellow flowers I love how whimsical it is this is a starburst clarendendrum this is beautiful I'll find a picture and reference it and then this is where I planted the two elderberries and I put my cages over them and let me take you up front my husband and I put in a grapevine trellis up front here and I struggled for a little bit with my grapevine but I'm very very excited to say that it is coming back and I actually have small little bunches on there. And that set, and there was a couple other. Here's another set up here. And this is there's another little set down at the bottom. So I'm very excited to say that uh, that is finally coming in. We struggled a little bit. It was trying to get used to being in the soil from a planter. These are called staghorns here in Florida. Highly sought after, very, very expensive um, to purchase. This one on this back tree is the parent plant for all of these smaller ones. But that uh, staghorn is estimated to be around $1,500 for one of those. So let me take you back up and I will take you into the hen house and show you the final seeds that I'm gonna plant for today so that I can wrap up my day. Thanks so much for taking that little walk with me up front and letting me uh, show you where I planted the elderberry and my grapevines and the rest of my beautiful plants along the east side of my house. Now I'm back out here um, where I have all of my gardening soil and my seeds and I'm happy to say that I've got everything done that I'd hoped to get done today. I have all of my lasayas and bell peppers replanted along with the Swiss chard and the sweet potato starts. They've all been brought in out of the garden um, and started in water for a couple weeks until they stay really healthy and I prepare a spot for them out in the garden. Also, 
I wanted to, I, I mentioned to you in previous videos that I wanted to get on growing my strawberries out in the garden in the green stock. And I have these strawberries right here that I picked up, these little seeds. And I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna start about six of these seeds today. We're gonna start them in these little planters. I have a very large bag of peat moss here. I'm gonna um, really put a lot of peat moss in here and give these a good start. And I'm also going to start some corn. I have a nice back area behind this barn that is a rocky area uh, that we don't plant anything in. It gets beautiful sunlight and plenty of irrigation. So we're going to go ahead and move the rocks either back or forward and make a, a long pathway to grow corn in. We have nothing growing back there right now. And this whole barn is about a 30 foot barn. Uh, so I can use probably about 20 foot of it um, all along the side to grow some corn. I'm going to do about six plants of each and I have three different kind here. This is a uh, sweet corn. Then I also have this orchard baby corn. This is from Baker's uh, Creek. And I have this glass gem corn from Baker's Creek as well. And this looks really, really cool. I was, I got the idea of growing some corn from one of my followers, Lori in Texas. And um, I hadn't thought about it before, but uh, thank you, Lori. I'm gonna give these uh, a chance out uh, in here first. We're gonna put them in little pots uh, while I prepare the area, let them get a good start. I do have a lot of squirrels in my area, so I'm going to start them in these little pots, and then once they're up uh, and good and healthy, then we'll go ahead and we'll transplant them along the back of the barn. So thank you so much for joining me again today in this uh, little garden spree and uh, reseeding and replanting and up potting and um, but I just want to say thank you so much for joining me and I hope you uh, got some information that was helpful if there's any suggestions you might have please leave that down in the comments and until next time God bless and happy gardening